Jehova Molak. Hola Molamat. Jehova Molak. Yame. Rakis. Jehova Gadol. Makarian Tios. Jehova Erdonai. Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Penta Creta. Kurios Tios Pistos. El Daat Jehova. El Emuna Jehova. Ibasilion Kurios. Otios. O Penta Creta. Basilios, Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion Nimohagion Penta Creta, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Yehova Ishmal Kam, Yehova Shamma. Yelnakum Yehova, Yelnakum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava Gava. Triembos Yehova, Isus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Nimohagion Panta Creta, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Derek Emunabakar, Mishpat Shava, Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim, Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. The Megalogai of Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the principle of Sageb over the motto of Satan. Sageb, which is called to be inaccessibly high, where Satan cannot even touch you. The motto of Satan is called to make you in your life to disobey the word of the Lord of God. As the Israelites were peeping in for the women who were not in the standards of the Israelites, and when Balaam is been hired by Balak to curse, when Balaam gives that one small sign of signal to say, if those women would come, the wrath of the Lord of God would absolutely destroy this because they wanted to be pure and they have defiled themselves. The way how that one act of disobedience is enough to Satan is what we call the motto of Satan. But the word of Lord God right from the beginning cries out to say, Fear not, only believe. If you would believe the great and unique mandates of the word of the Lord of God and fulfill 
the thinking of the Lord of our God in our life, as joining as disciples growing up into Grammatias, because the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons. As such principle, if we grow up by making complete dedication to believe the true word of the Lord of our God and execute our life according to that standards of the word of the Lord of our God, there would be no sickness for you. It includes all. Not only the sickness, each and every difficulty of your life. And that's the reason why Lord uses Job as a great example for every believer in life. As we have been stating to you, the test of the Lord of God first towards this life and then towards the plan of eternal life in the work of Christ as a pastor teacher. So the first thing as a test of Job, if we would look for each and every believer, he emphasizes that the word Job itself is called to be haters. So Lord God hates anything which we walk contrary, even a minute thing. If the word of Lord God says, if you would follow my statutes and do what are my will, then you will not have none of the sicknesses. And if you don't believe that, then you are absolutely being hated by the Lord. But here in the case of Job, when his name himself emphasizes hater, it meant to say for us, he hated the things which God hated on this earth. He walked upright. He did that which was right and good in the sight of the Lord of God. And there was none like him upon the earth, witnesses the Bible. So every believer having this integrity test or Christian suffering test, he has to be in the realm of making his life according to the standards like Job. And Job, when he was walking upright, when he was doing the will of Lord God the Father, each and everything what God the Father or the Godhead or the Trinity of the Godhead, what they hate in man, they have proven for us to know through the life of Job that we have to completely subject ourselves. Though he may utterly slay us, yet we need to trust in him. But God the Father doesn't slay you. He doesn't tempt you beyond your capacity or he's going to test you beyond your capacity. The only thing what he says is, fear not because Jehovah Malak, Jehovah our Lord of our God reigneth. The word Jehovah Malak meant to say reigneth. It is called, make up your blood, to be in the standards of disciple-oriented growing up into grammatias. In Psalms chapter 96 in verse number 13, God the Father is going to come back to this earth and is going to church with righteousness and with truth. The word righteousness, sidken, no matter what may be the pressure in your life, get every thought into captivity for Christ to walk according to the thinking of the word of the Lord. And the word emeth, what we call truth, it meant to say, your blood should be oriented, nothing but the word of the Lord. And that blood, when it has been oriented with the word of the Lord of a God, you will learn the importance why Lord God the Father alone reigneth. Because that blood will make you to become disciples. That blood will make you to become growing up into grammatias. That blood will make you to fear not, but only obey the word of the Lord. But Satan's motto is to see that you simply disobey the word of the Lord. As we find illustration in First Kings chapter 13, over the young prophet, by listening and obeying to the words of the old prophet, Prophet, rather than confirming to the will of God. There we look in very, very simple words. The lion killed the young prophet and it did not tear the donkey. So like a roaring lion, Satan wants to take revenge upon us. But if we are obeying to the word of the Lord our God, we are not destroying our own flesh. When we fail to obey, that is to become disciples, that is to carry his cross and look and do according to the will of God the Father, then automatically you are being into the motto of Satan. And when you're living according to the motto of Satan, for sure, Satan like a roaring lion, it would come and cast away your body as carcass. And what does it cast away or the word fling? It looks that you are not growing up into grammatias. And that's what we have been telling for you. If your body is not being dedicated as a living sacrifice to Christ, renovating the standards of your thinking, according to the great and unique demands of the word of the Lord of a God, then for sure your body will become a greater slaughter of a sacrifice to Dagon's. And that's what they will enjoy saying that. Satan has delivered you into their hands. 
but it is what you have delivered in your own volition not to obey the word of the Lord of God. Thus you are walking dead though you are alive and called to live to sow that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord of God and walk out from the area where you were earlier. The area where you were walking in the area of sin, in the area of the things which is contrary to the word of the Lord of God and we have been told to walk in according to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But what we are doing today, though day by day the word of the Lord of God is being preached, day by day the mind of Christ is being preached, though you have been called to conform to the image of Christ, though you have been told the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons in Christ, you are making the word of Lord God to be worthless because you don't believe the teachings of Lord God day by day, though it has been poured out every second in this life. Dear brethren, the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of our God, which hath seemeth fit for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory, what he has prepared and kept for us on today's date, we shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the Lord of our God. Because only believing but not having any fear on this world, if you would believe the word of Lord God, your life would be absolutely brilliant. Only believe. People don't love to believe the word of God because they don't want to become their body to be the disciple of the word of the Lord. They don't want to proclaim the mind of Christ. They don't want to engage themselves to renovate the standards of making this body to be a living sacrifice to Christ. Therefore, they don't believe the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When he began on this earth, he said, Do you believe I can do this? Why the reason is telling them, Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you have faith? Do you believe? And he said, Marvel, saying, I haven't seen greater faith in Israel than the centurion. When he said, you just speak your word, O Lord, it's enough. And he has given for us the completed revolution of the word of the Lord of our God to have a greater impact than the bones of Elisha. Because your body is a temple of the living Lord God of hosts. Having to have such kind of a great impact than the bones of Elisha, if you don't believe that you have to be joined as a disciple and growing up into grammatias, if you don't believe that you have been given a opportunity in this life to have a sagab kind of experience, Satan cannot even touch you. It's what the distorted thinking your mind is causing you to disobey the word of the Lord of our God for the lusts of your flesh, for the things of the life on this way of the master of the details. And that's what it is causing you to disobey. And Satan's main aim and motto is to see that you just simply disobey the word of the Lord of our God. And as Balak hired Balaam, though he was been instructed with the donkey not to do so, he went to curse and when he wanted to curse, the words were not cursed, but they were blessing to the people because what Lord God has blessed, no one can curse them. And yet we find over there the very, very simple importance of this word which teaches to us that he taught them to look what their lustful pattern was desiring. And that lustful pattern, what it has been desiring in them, made a trap. And that's what Satan looks into you and into me. Anything that which is causing to have a lust. And what is that lust today? To disobey the word of the Lord, not to believe the mind of Christ. You really reject to believe if you are a disciple growing up into Grammatias, then Exodus 15, 26 and 27 will be a way of life. No sicknesses, he said, none of the sicknesses will come upon you. But you're battling along in this body with the sicknesses. And what was the sicknesses of Elisha when we read in Second Kings chapter 13? It was not the sicknesses of his age. It was the sicknesses that there weren't enough disciples to carry this torch to the next generation. Because a burdened heart for the Lord is the best heart that any cardiologist on this earth can ever research or can ever find it out. 
But today the hearts are not burdened to the Lord, but in return these hearts are burdened to the world and to the lusts of their life and for the fulfillments of the goals of the futurity of generations, for the progeny what they produce. Therefore those hearts have not been good in the sight of the Lord, therefore they have been stricken with sicknesses in their life. If they would only believe, if they would only follow in the path of the word of the Lord of our God, the great pain of Sam in Psalms 81 emphasizes for us to learn. If they would only believe. That's the thing what Christ our Lord our God emphasizes to the people of Israelites, saying that if he would only believe. Do you think I can do this? He asks them. If you would only believe you could look into the marvelous wonders in the time of the resuscitation of Lazarus. This has been done for the glory of the Lord and he weeps over there for the reason that they're not able to believe. The same thing is today in the present Christendom. People are not able to believe to make up their body to be the living sacrifice of Christ, to make up their body to carry their cross every day, grow up into grammatias, to make up to understand that it is Jehovah Elohim who is Malak, who is the only one that reigneth forever and forever. And such kind of a Lord God when he wants to reigneth or to become and he has to make it to be the kings, he wants your blood to be disciple oriented growing up into grammatias in Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ under the indwelling controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit but what is happening today dear brethren people don't believe though it has been poured out all day long people are not interested to believe the shoulder blade responsibility laid down upon their shoulders because the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons who are mature sons in the word of the Lord of a God. The shoulder blade responsibility to be the prince of peace because he has told, I have given you the peace that the world cannot give you. No one can have this peace apart from coming unto my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and through our lives showing the peace of great health. Today many people are worried to have sicknesses in them as a great major battling in life. If we could prove we have that peace of health because we are believing the word of Lord God we are walking in the mentoring ministry of Lord God and we are making up in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to make this body to be a living sacrifice to Christ people would look upon us and they would come to have to believe upon the great peace of Christ only when you are obeying to the commandments of the word of the Lord of a God but the problem is you are not obeying the commandments of the word of the Lord of a God and you are in return standing in queue for the sicknesses to be cured by the same path how an unbeliever would walk and you say there is a greater peace in Christ and they would mock and laugh and ridicule at you because you are not proving what is that great peace in life when you obey the mandates of the word of the Lord of a God when you fulfill the teachings of the Lord of a God in this church eh? And yet you people don't understand the importance of this word. You know what a great pain it would be for Christ when you are saying in return you don't believe his word. The promises given to you, the things pertaining to the mind of Christ given to us. You are calling Lord God that he is a blasphemer, he is a liar. When you don't believe his word. The ministry of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ beginning to say, if you believe, only believe, have faith. But they aren't enough men to have such faith. Because they don't believe. Because they don't make up their bodies to be the disciple oriented. If your body is a disciple oriented, your brethren, Satan no way can touch it. Satan has only one motto in life, to make you to disobey, to make you to not to believe the word of the Lord of a God, to drag away the word of the Lord of a God, the same thing what we learned from the lesson of Adam and Eve. To put a doubt upon the word of the Lord of a God. And when they failed to believe the word of the Lord of a God, they were spiritually dead. And today, you may be spiritually alive by believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you fail to believe in the word of the Lord of a God, you are dying necrosis. 
and you run for miracle healers you run for idiotic men but you forget that lord god sent his word to healers if you would only obey his mandate you are going to represent to this world the greater peace of christ and what a great sad thing it is for us to note in isaiah chapter 9 in verse number 8 which we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my lord which christ our lord of god has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory infinitely divine holy father once again coming unto the grace of lord to learn the word we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten and to challenge us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of your glory in christ name we pray so in lord Amen. In Isaiah chapter nine, when we have been looking constantly, to begin with verse number one, he says that the people of the Gentiles or the Tafni, how they would be. So he is going to lead them, saying that the people that walked in darkness, they will see a great light. They have seen a great light. He says, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them that the light hath shined. You know what is this uh, light or the or the things pertaining to that great light? He emphasizes we are going to have the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He is going to give to us the completed can of Scripture. He has kept for us the role model, like the way how Lord and Savior Jesus Christ walked on this earth. So, in very very simple words, he teaches to us that we we were earlier not knowing the power of this life or the instant of this health or the things pertaining to the marvelous wonders of his will. but now through the word of lord god through the remata declaration of the pastor teacher when the god breathed or theonustas the divine inspiration of the scriptures being penned and kept for us through the apostles as well as the prophets you can see great light and you can walk in the light walking out from the shadow of death You know this people who are walking in the shadow of death or they that they that, that, that walk in darkness are the men who are being all the time ignorant and not able to believe becoming arrogant enough not to make a practical way of life in walking in the truth making their blood to be authority oriented according to the word of the law So these are the men who were but now we have the word of Lord God we have the completed can of scripture we have now the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit we have much more than the most we can ever think of or even imagine or could even ask to God the Father we have all the things for us So he's emphasizing over your first beginning with the people saying that the people that walked in darkness they have seen a great light they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them that the light hath shined and do you think it is yet to be shined it is yet to be seen it is already marveling manifesting every day the eternal word which became flesh and dwelt we look after 2000 years or 1440 years of the journey of the people of abraham when he called but we have almost all 3000 years back this word of god in our hands when bereshit has been written by mouse as he goes to teach to us and no one can understand this revolution until unless he walks by faith people may love to have creation history they may love to have many theories evolution theories but we walk by faith because bible alone is the only revolution for man to understand and no matter how our assumptions may be for evolution theory like darwin theory or big bang theory or any materialistic or any other theory what these people they would love to be you know they love to be humanistic naturalistic or whatsoever it is and they love to prove that man came from amoeba or whatsoever it is all these theories are what you are living your life by not believing in the word of the law the only theory what god revealed to man god created the man god created the nature in the beginning and he the way how he writes in genesis 1 1 and 1 2 he emphasizes about that gap theory where with the angelic conflict is been included and he further emphasizes the reconstruction from verse 3 to verse 14 that's the phase of our life greater light was been given to rule the day and the smaller light to given the rule over the night and each of the everything's the light which emphasizes the glorious work of christ on this earth by the power of lord god the holy spirit revealing to us 
And if the man doesn't believe this biblical evolution of theory, all other evolutions of theory are absolutely vain and vague. These are the imaginations and the fragments of men. These are called to be the myths and mythological standards of the thinking of vain brain on this earth. As you can find, biblical theory can give you the only account. So as such, how man can live on this earth has been found only through the Bible. What is the health with this flesh? What is the purpose of becoming to obey the word of Lord God, to become our life, our blood? To join as disciples and to grow up into grammatias. When Adam was being made, he was also a disciple unto the Lord. Every day he walked. And Satan has only one motto to deceive you. To make you to disobey the word of the Lord of a God and not to, to believe in the word of the Lord of a God. And that's what Satan was successful by the beguiling nature, the way how it deceived Eve and the way how Adam fell for Eve. And because of both, the human race been cursed, having the old sin nature. But through the last Adam who came in the form of the word of the Lord of a God in the flesh, Paying in full because there is none on this earth who can substitute for us. Except Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he was been born in the hypostatic union for us to understand true divinity and in that true humanity. And having such great hypostatic union or the true doctrine of kenosis. He died for you and for me so that the word of Lord God alone, the scripture alone can replace man again once again to the righteousness of the will of God. And that's what tomorrow the world will commemorate about the Good Friday. But it is the word of Lord God which has been given as a replacement for the fallen sinful nature of man to tie back, to reconcile back, being one mediator between God and Father. And if it is not the word, the way you cannot reconcile, if it is not the word of Lord God, you cannot use this body to the glory of Lord God. You will be in search of all vain, vague evolution theories of medicine to your body. As people are finding out today, the evolution theories for them to be saying how God made man or how man came on this earth and what was the purpose of man. You know, all these things are vain and vague until as you come back and look your word, which is Bible doctrine being taught by the pastor teacher to know what is man, how is man, why is man and what is that after his death, where he has to be if he hasn't been fulfilled, found faithful till the time he could die on this earth then he would be in the second death so all these things have been crystallized and have been crystal clear for us in the standards of Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 in the exegetical standards where with the authority and ability given to the pastor teacher male believing pastor teacher to teach the truth that's the word Raymata declaration of the pastor teacher day by day what they have to preach if it is not been believed you're going to ruin your own life. There is nothing God the Father can lose. There is nothing what we can lose as preachers of the word of the Lord of our God, as pastor teachers being the bona fide gift of the Lord given to us to represent with authority the complete can of scripture. We don't lose anything. We are here to pour down for you all day long. We are here to give you the importance of your life to be known. They are here to make it a mention to believe the word of God. Whether you believe it or accept it or reject it, just left to you. But our point is to crack out and give you the truth. To teach what exactly is the demand of the mind of Christ. And nothing else than that. It doesn't make any difference if you believe. If it doesn't make any difference if you don't believe to us. If you believe, you're going to use your body for the greater glory of God. If you don't believe, you're going to die sin unto death. Having sickness in your body. Because Satan's trap or the thing of Satan's plan or the strategy of Satan is to see that you don't believe the word of God. As the ang prophet disobeyed the word of Lord God, the strategy of Satan is to see that you disobey the word of Lord God. You don't carry your cross every day. You don't come to renovate the standards of your thinking every day. You don't become the disciple of the word of the Lord of God every day. And today the way how the people, they are looking into different evolution theories. So they are having many, many evolution theories. When they consider themselves 
in comparison to only one way of life on this earth. One heart, one way, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. In one accord, in one spirit. We have only one. Hainas. If not God, the Father would have showed you dupsas or the time called to be twice or two ways. But he shows no, there is only one way. Therefore, in the Ten Commandments, he says, you will not make any other image equivalent to God the Father or the things pertaining to God out of the heaven or the earth or under the earth or in the sea. No Dagons. No Dianas. And nothing of a kind wherewith you can think that this could be God. But he says only one God. You cannot give him a form or shape. And that one God is the word of Lord God, what we have for us. Therefore, we have been constantly reprimanded. What you sow, that you will reap. Be careful about that. Let every man carry his own portion, his own burden. Let him look in his own consciousness, the truth. But you know what the man is? Though for him great light and light has been shining on this earth, he doesn't want to look upon that light any longer. So we find over here for us in Psalms chapter 81, having this word, there shall be no strange God. And this verse is very, very important in verse number 9. Because Lord God the Father has made this body, Sageb, inaccessibly high, Satan cannot even touch you. The body what we have is something great and unique. It has been called for the glory of God the Father as a temple of living Lord God the Father to manifest the righteousness of Christ in this life and to represent in this earth the truth, the truth, making our blood to be the word of Lord God. There is no other access of work with this, blood, with this body on this earth. Though people may think they may have many works with this body. No, dear brother, don't have any other work. No strange God, it mentions for us, in the same manner, there is a purpose with this life on this earth, only to join us disciples and to grow up into grammatias after believing in Christ. As you have different evolution theories of man, so these people, they are trying to find out various schemes. Ecclesiastes 2.26 teaches to us. God made man upright. And making that man upright, he has designed for this man to understand. Giving a very, very great and unique example about Job. The name Job itself meant to say hate. The things what Lord God hates in this man are not been found in Job. Therefore, he says there is none like him. You should learn the lesson about Job. You should learn the lesson like Daniel. You should learn the lesson like Noah. And when these three men have been recorded in Ezekiel chapter 14, it emphasizes for the righteousness what they lived before God. And the manner of life what they lived. Job. He goes on to teach to us the great example in Job chapter 29. What he was to the people. He was a mouth, he was a person wherewith he could deal gently and kindly with all the cases of life. Today, not many men, they are acting like that. The way how he was disciplining his children, instructing by the word. That's what he writes in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 4. Do not frustrate your children, the word techna, but rather instruct them with word by disciplining indeed. That's the work of the pastor teacher and the work of the parents. The father disciplines by deed and the mother instructs by the word. Again, Proverbs chapter 6. So having to give Musa is by the father. Having to give Torah is by the mother. So he emphasizes in simple words, as the pastor teacher does, he goes on to encourage you with the word of Lord God, and if needed, he's going to discipline you by deed. But today there is no encouragement, neither discipline by the word of Lord God to these people. Because the ministers are worried where they will lose the daily bread and butter. 
where they will lose their job. So what the best withers they would think, make the things pertaining to run the programs as the churches are running the programs and not to refute them, not to change them. But that which is pleasing to the men, dear brethren, don't worry, the way what you sow you will reap. With Lord God, there is no chance of mockery. You cannot deceive Lord God. With what intention you have sowed, the same intention and imagination behind that God the Father will show for you. So, dear brethren, he says in Psalms chapter 81 in verse number one, 9, There shall no strange God be in thee. It may be thinking for you there is something else. But the problem over here in the Hebrew, he says that the word L, which is called 410 code, because there are three codes mentioned for God. Capital G-O-D, 430, referring to Yehovah Elohim. Small G-O-D, referring to the other gods, or the men who have made up or cooked up with their own imaginations, because we know very well there is no other God apart from Yehovah Elohim. And when this, and when, once again the code 410, which has been mentioned, it refers back to man. And the mighty God, what we look in Isaiah 9, 6, it refers back that God came in the form of flesh. And when we are in the form of flesh, he has been told as per John 10, 35, scriptures cannot be broken. To whom the word of Lord God came, they became gods. To whom? To the people on this earth who haven't known yet Christ. We have to be greater than the bones of Elisha. When the dead man could come in contact with the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. And we read yesterday as per Jeremiah 32, 7, Hannah Eil, with following with the standards of Hilwak, or Tilwak, the wife or the husband of Hul, the, the prophetess Hanameel, the word, and he purchased the land, and he gave that to Job, to Jeremiah, and we read the good things will be stored back again in that land, as he has stored and kept that land, and he says he's going to put a new heart, and the way what is going to teach is one way, one heart, and he will be our God, and we will be his people. So we read that yesterday from Jeremiah thirty-two. So this man was the having, the his father came in touch with the bones of Elisha and they did something further protection for the word of the Lord and for the remnant of Israel. That time then existed. But now for us, if there is an unbeliever who is going to come in touch with us because we have been called now to be the El, called to be the God, small G-O-D, to whom the word of Lord God came, he said, they will be God's. So when he's emphasizing this word gods, he's teaching that you lead them by an example in the Aleph, Aleph vigor and valor energy of a disciple oriented. You lead them by example. But today men are not able to understand by this example. Like the bones of Elisha they are. So he's saying, you shall have no alien god. You know what are these alien gods? These are the people who are digging up to themselves to cook that which are the demands of humanity. Having some fears, you know, man has many phobias in this life. He wants everything to be in peace and calm. He wants the water to be like a calm stream which flows. But you know very well, you don't find that thing. In the sea, you will not find so. It will be turbulent. But man wants all the time to be flowing in a calm stream of water that flows. And in that calm stream of water, what is flowing, he emphasizes to us, God, if you want this, I will do. God, if you want that, I will do. But see that there shall be no disturbances in my family. Make me to be have peace. Make me to be peace with the people whom I surround. Make me to be happy with the nature where I am living. Make me to be comfortable. And the people who are cooking up, who don't know that the umbilical core of relationship with Christ alone or the way how you're going to sustain in the righteousness of Lord God alone, you're going to have that peace. No one can give you that peace of the Lord God on this earth apart from Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
You're trying to cook up peace as Adam and Eve tying the fig leaves. They were having to be with peace with each other. So you are now trying to have peace in the holier than the attitude. And you're thinking that I will have guards to me. And now the men who are looking for their standards of life on this earth for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. As we look in Ezekiel chapter 13, they are trying to, they are trying to sew up for you with the pillows. They're trying to cook up with the standards of your armholes. So all these people, the way how they're trying to live, we find find in very very simple and great words that this man the way how they have been there they are going to prepare now for your guards so he says for your guards in your home you have your home guards so one thing of a piece you will get from him so you have there one more guard. If you go to that place and if you pay your woes to that guard you are going to be clearing some of the things there so you go to that place So he says, no strange gods, no alien gods. You know what is alien in other terms? The way of these people that are teaching you the word of Lord God without exegesis, without dispensations, without isagogics, without categories, everything which is not in accord to make you to come every day as a disciple oriented, growing up into grammatias or growing up into scribe and to make up your body to be the will of God the Father. Everything what they preach, everything what they teach is alien apart from that. If they don't emphasize you, as we read from Leviticus 21, blind to broken testicle ministers, these are for you, who cannot even pass through that veil. Passing through that veil demands you need to become a scribe. In order to become a scribe, it demands you carry your cross every day unto Christ. The strange things what they're teaching to you, contrary to the word of Lord God, how foolish and stupid is the present Christendom being completely submerged into the lusts of Satan to deceive you. You don't even have eyes to look. If the Bible says every day you need to come back and carry your cross and do the will of God the Father, and if you would come weekly once, and if you would follow the pattern of the world, how stupid you are, you are not even to be like the people of Berrien Church. And you have been so much blinded in this world. And you are not able to realize the things what you are practicing is absolutely alien to the mind of Christ. The great things what we find over here in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. You would be a mighty God or the man he says mighty man. It meant to say El Geborah. The man who has established in him as a disciple oriented the thinking of Christ. Such a mighty man you ought to be for Christ. El Gebora. But you're having for you mighty gods, alien gods, alien teachings. And though you have to be El Gebora, and the word what we find over there in Isaiah 9, 7, the way of the people of Israelites will once again come back and reconcile to the Lord. And then do you know what does he say in 9, 8? He teaches that the people, they have counted the great truth of Lord God as worthless. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. And it hath lighted upon him. It is not lighted in the sense to enlighten him. No. But the word over here, what we learn, meant to say Nepal. And Nepal meant to say, the vigor and valor never opened up their mouth to make disciples. So what it has happened? It has been thrown down as worthless. And as the people who are pregnant, they know the importance of miscarriage. It did not produce in them the kid, the sperm of Christ. As we look upon that passage twice, 1 John 3, 9, having in you the sperm of Christ, Galatians 4, 19, making to you form in you the thinking of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be completely formed as the birth pangs of the labor of a woman. That thing has been miscarried. The great information what we have in Isaiah 9, and 9, 6 and 7. 
Every believer what he has to be confirming to the image of Christ for unto us a child has been born and we have been telling to you Lord, Lord it meant to say make up your every thought make up your every perception to be as a disciple oriented to be as a disciple oriented John 1 12 to them he gave the power to become the sons of God or exist authority because these are the technon children because the creation is awaiting that these technon children should grow up into the adult sons of Christ and manifest the glory of Lord God. But do you know what is happening? The Lord God gave this word. They were the recipients of the divine oracles of Romans 4. Who? The Jews. God the Father gave this information for them long back. As Isaiah writes many deep things for us to learn even from the book of chapter number 40. As people would love to call Deuterizia. But from chapter number 40 till number 40, 66, we learn great many truths. The way how he has taught for us, the way how he has been inculcated them for us. Are there aren't enough men to expound the truth for you? Why? Because it has been falling upon worthless man. The ears who don't want to have a circumcised one. The hearts which don't want to be circumcised. But outward circumcision they need. But inward circumcision they don't want to need. As James writes in chapter 4 for us to teach. If you know that which is right to do. And if you do not it will be counted for you to be as a sin. So is what today the pastor teachers are counted. And whether they allowed to agree it or not. We don't want to count it for us as sin. Which is good that we have to preach. Whether they hear or phobia. Whether they listen or not. Because you men are not liking to look. What is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Of a God to be used by your body. To the will of God and to the glory of God. You want to make up your bodies dead. In your own sicknesses. Your own sicknesses is your own disobedience. To the word of Lord God. And you love to listen, sheer oratories. Go back. Anything that which is strange. God the Father, John 1.18 emphasizes exegesis. Exegeoma is the order of the pulpits. There is no other rule that can rule over there apart from exegeoma. If you would love to teach your great sheer acts of oratory, it's alien to the sight of Lord God. You're not preparing these people to meet the Lord God. You're preparing them for your own glory. You're preparing them for your own belly. You're preparing them or you're feeding them with lies. Therefore, you don't have the seriousness of this ministry. And all the days of your life, you're so much happy on this earth. Thinking that you have done great work. Thinking that you are a great preacher. Thinking that you have done X, Y, Z to the Lord. But you have damaged completely the glory of the Lord. You have miscarried. You have counted it to be worthless. Every thought you get, which is not in accord with the word of Lord God, is counted to be worthless, is counted to be miscarriage. And therefore, Lord God has a contention against you. He has a court matter against you in the heaven. My people are perished for not having the knowledge of the word of Lord God. There is no righteousness. There is no truth. There is no emeth. There is no knowledge of the word of the Lord of God, he says. No emeth, no keset. No sitken of the Lord God. This is what I have a contention against you. The word contention, he mentions that these people have not been trained as disciples in such a way. In Hosea chapter 4, in verse number 1. Because you people don't love to understand these words in the thing pertaining to the pictographical representation of the word of the Lord of a God. Yet it's our bona fide duty to teach you what does the word over there contention meant to say. Open your Bibles to Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 1. You have this word which has been written by Lord God the Holy Ghost under the ministry of Hosea to teach that that Lord God has a controversy. And what is that controversy? Rib, ria. And it meant to say for us that your head is not been renovated according to the stand standards of the word of the Lord of a God. Your body is not operating according to the standards of the mind of Christ. So the word controversy, what is meant to say for us that the head of the family, the person who rules that is not been in authority and wisdom so that they could make his family to walk to become disciples. 
That's the controversy we read in James 4.4. You adulterer and adulterous generations, Micah and Michaelas. The Micah referring back to the head of the family, the same thing over here. The head of the family is the one who represents the whole tribe in authority and having to manifest greater wisdom. That's why Christ is the head. The family being the church which follows the head. The husband is the head. The woman has to follow by having to obey in whatsoever the husband commands her to do. But the church is not obeying whatsoever the church is, has to obey whatsoever Christ our Lord our God commands us to do. And yet dear brethren, controversy and what is that controversy he says no troth no amat their blood is not oriented the blood which continues to them in their heart should be pumping according to the demands of the word of the Lord of God their blood is not oriented to the will of God no kasad there is no kindness no matter whatever may be the pressure in life to get every perception thought into the captivity for Christ they don't have that kindness and there is no knowledge their eyes are not fixed to get everything acquainted into Christ. No knowledge. So Lord God has a controversy. If the head of the family doesn't lead it to be the truth, because he's not the truth, the family is gone to dogs. Dogs are impure minds. Kune in the Greek. The thinking gets corrupted. When the thinking gets corrupted, never they make up their life to become disciples to the word of the Lord of a God, but rather their body will be best suited for degons. Because never they make up their body to be the disciple for the word of the Lord. And what they search? They search for them such kind of a dogs, to use the word. You know what these impure dogs? From blind to broken testicle dogs these are. The ministry will never emphasize you to become disciples. Even today, dear brother, and right now in the present Christendom of this date, after the good Wednesday of my Lord for this year, 2022, if your pastor teachers are not making you to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of God, are causing you to grow up into grammatias, then you are under the ministry of dogs, dumb dogs which cannot bark. And these dumb dogs, what you're having today, are ample to the core. People love to emphasize sweet personality, having the personality of to call stupid, indoctrinated, not to the word of God, but difference to the word of God. Having your numb skulls. Your skulls have been absolutely numb. You know the great word of the Lord of God, what it meant to say. When the word has been given to them, it has become a light thing, nafail. It fell upon the people who are counting it to be worthless and they count my Lord God to be a blasphemous one. They don't believe the word of the Lord of a God. And the promises of Lord God, you say, there is no character in the Lord. So I love to follow the chemicals of this earth for my equilibrium. So I love to follow the designs of this world for my prosperity. The different evolution theories, dear brother, note it down. The only one evolution theory of the Lord God you don't want to follow. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the man, out of the mouth of the Lord of a God which comes. And that's the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher. Therefore, the ministers of the word of the Lord of a God are fire-oriented ministers. As he writes that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, in verse 33 and 34. Because there is not a such a form where man can live. As he spoke from the midst of the fire. And they could continue, he says. There is no such a man. And that meant to say what? You shall not live in the same old sin nature life after you know the truth. After the ministry of the fire upon you. You shall no longer reside in the same path. You will die in that. And you will come back as a new one to Christ.
But today the ministers don't know the fire of the work of the Lord. The pastor teachers not understand the importance of making no strange things to be in the pulpit. If at least these pastor teachers are having these flattering titles, if they would come back and sit and learn what exactly is the duty of a pastor teacher, Colossians 1, 24-29, Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 32, followed by Jeremiah 3 15, again Ephesians 4 11 through 13. If they would understand this duty as a bona fide work of the pastor teacher, at least if they would sit and learn and understand, they wouldn't prove in this world the character of my Lord to be blasphemous or a liar. Every believer would be greater than the bones of Elisha. Every believer would be well prepared to meet the Lord of our God. Every believer will be in the standards of making this great life of Christ to be shined forth on this earth. Every believer would be sick and free. Every believer would be growing up to grammatias. Every believer would understand the responsibility of my life to sustain on this earth demands every day to take in the word of the Lord of our God, demands every day to learn the mind of Christ. But today the people don't have respect for the word of the law. They don't love my law. They just love with the lips, their hearts being far away. Long back said by Isaiah. We are manifested that today in our pulpits. When Samuel would come, the elders will stand up and they say, Is it with peace you came? Because that's the karad what they had, the trembling fear in their life, that they're missing the marks of the word of the Lord of a God, and if they miss the marks of the word of the Lord of a God, they would die sin unto death. But today minister itself is in karad. Before the people, it has become an exact opposite role. He's worrying where if you tell the truth, people would kick him off. And they would search a new pastor, they would search a new thing. And just for the sake of his sustenance, just for the sake of his belly, just for the things pertaining to his life, he's going to just reside with the gimmicks of the committee of the church. Dear brethren, rightly dividing the word of truth, irrespective of your personality, God the Father wants rightly dividing the word of truth, whether they hear or forbear, because it is Lord God's will, it is He who has made the heaven and the earth, there is nothing on this earth that can make you to keep behind the truth. If the word was told to the young prophet not even to drink or make or, or eat the food and water in that place, he would have just continued whether it might be from the old prophet to tell to do so because Lord word came unto him. When God, God the Father gives you the commission to starve and go and do the work of the Lord, there could be no greater honor than that. So whether they provide you or not, teach the truth. Not mixing with the gimmicks of the committee, but laying down in line the word of the Lord. And until and unless you have this attitude to preach the word of Lord God, you're really not doing the work of Lord God. Your ministry sustains because the word of Lord God what you teach. Your ministry has not been sustained by the committee of the church. Your ministry has not been sustained by the gimmicks of the money that flows into the church. Your ministry will survive by rightly dividing the word of truth because it is not the ministry like the kerchiefs or the, or the aprons or the shadows after the completion of the can of scripture. Your pure ministry is to rightly divide the word of truth. And yet, dear brethren, we find many strange things in our pulpits. Many strange things which are absolutely alien to the mind of Christ. The sustenance of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost indwelling in you, is to rightly divide the word of truth and nothing else than that. At the same time, you are making up your body to be sickened by disobeying the mandates of the word of the law.
in second samuel chapter 18 we have the lesson of life beginning with verse number 9 and absalom met the servants of david when the absalom rebellion was happened david will look weeping and walking naked with his bare foot not naked in his clothes but his bare foot And the reason behind that we look, the case of Uriah the Hittite, when he says the Ark of the Covenant lieth open there in the field. He did not show respect to protect to be the doorkeepers of the word of the Lord of a God. And that he goes to go on with the gimmicks of intoxication drinks and at last murders him. And if it were not God who helped him, Second Chronicles, or in First Chronicles, chapter fifteen, with the gatekeepers and the priests, who were the doorkeepers of the Ark of the Covenant to get back to Jerusalem, and at every six steps or seven steps, sacrificing seven rams and seven bullocks, if it were not God to help him, never. It would be. Again bought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. So God helps them. Because already we find the Paris Hosea. Such kind of a great Shekinah glory of Lord God has been laid open. And Uriah the Hittite comes. And says to David. And David neglects to go and protect the Ark of the Covenant. But rather he is entrusted to cover his sin. By murdering the husband of Bathsheba, Uriah the Hittite. So now when we look over here, Absalom met the servants of David. David is having a great caliber to kill his, uh, this rebellion of Absalom, having with him great mighty men. So the people, they witnessed to David saying that what seemeth in, the, in verse number 3, in verse number 2, uh, we begin, David sent forth the third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and the third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeuriah, and Joab's brother, and the third part under the hand of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. If we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die, will they care for us. But now you are worth ten thousand of us. Therefore, now it is better that you succor us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seemeth you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by the hundreds and by thousands. You know, David, the Lord God, was with him. We read in First Samuel chapter 16. Having the attributes of great men in him, Lord God was with him. So this man is now fearing for Absalom. And the people are saying, you are just like a 10,000 word because the song what they sing over the death of Goliath. So there is no need for him to fear his son. When the absolute rebellion was there, but because of not showing proper respect to the Ark of the Covenant, he weeps and he walks barefooted. And now when we come back to this verse number 9, we say that, Absalom met the servants of David and then Absalom rode upon a mule. If he would have really been so great and strong over David's servants, he would have stood and fought. But what does he do? He rides upon a mule. You know what is that riding? That is what called to be a chariot wagon wherewith it has been stated. But for us, the Hebrew word is called to be rakab. Rakab meant to say to run away. Why? Because Absalom, when though he thinks God is his father or God is peace with him as father. So he says his head is not been renovated according to the standards of a scribe and his body is not having the fear of the Lord. So when your head is not been renovated, when your work is not been done to carry every day the will of God the father, then for sure your body runs away. That's what it has happened over here. And Satan will fortify you 
like the council of Ahitophel and says that you can do and you can have your father's wives concubines so that they could think that you're having the authority and Satan would love to give you all the vain foolish men around you who don't have the fear of the Lord, fear of the elders. To live long on this life, he says, obey your parents. But all these things have been gone. Though the law says, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother or concubines. He did not heed to them. And this Absalom, he did not have that heed in his mind because he was not a scribe. He was not having that in his mind. He was not having that in his body. So where does he run? He's running now upon the mule. The word mule, what you find, is called in the Hebrew, pered. Pered meant to say, all the time to divide and to separate, and it is all the time lonely habits. And what is that lonely habits? What do you find over here? He meant to say, his mouth is not disciplined to become, to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Today, Christians are running upon their mules. Because their mouth doesn't talk about the renovated standards of the word of the Lord. Their mouth doesn't teach about the mind of Christ. So what they're running? They're running away from the responsibilities, what has been given upon their shoulders to be the will of God the Father. Because they don't have that renovated standards like a scribe. And Satan wants only one thing from your life. Disobey the word of God. That's the motto of Satan. When you disobey, you will hear lies. You will believe lies. You will follow lies as Absalom did over here. And if Absalom was such kind of a great warrior, he would have faced the servants of David. So now we look. When David was been running upon his mule, the mule went under the thick balls, the word went meant to say that the filling of an empty space. And what does it did? It with the vigor and valor, it was going through such thick balls or the word balls of the thick one, what we call over here to be like the network of things, what we call as oak tree. So what were the thick balls? Because there was a lot of pressure in his body and that pressure could not handle the things pertaining to life things on this earth because they were not oriented like scribes. So they follow traps. Thick balls will take care of them if you're not a disciple. Thick balls will take care of them if you're not grown up into grammatias in the Lord. So the mule, where did it go? It takes the pressures of life in such a manner to go and stuck up and there will be no solution for you. The solution will be only when you're growing up into grammatias in the law. The solution will be found only when you're becoming that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord by joining as disciples. But it goes and stucks up. You have been stuck up in Saqqeb. Your lonely habits. The mule being lonely habits. What does it do? It leads you to go and stuck up in the thick balls, that which has been interlaced branches. As you look into that great word in the book of Hosea, you may escape the lion, then bear will catch. You may escape the bear and you come home and you love to wash your feet. A snake from the walls of that middle one, when you're washing your feet, it will bite you and devour you. That's the thick balls. The pressures of life will make your body to remember if you were a scribe, you would have saved. If you were a scribe, God the Father would have protected you. If you were a scribe, he would have used you for the much greater glory of Christ. But you did not respect the character of my Christ. You sought to think the promises of God are vain if you don't become like a disciple and that you may think you may have a great health on this earth. But it says no, having a great health is a result of being a disciple growing up into grammatias in the Lord because your body has been designed in such a manner for Christ. It will be inaccessibly high. <laughs> Sicknesses cannot even touch you. Exodus 15, 26 and 27. Your body is designed to be a disciple. It's an inaccessibly high. You are not growing up as a disciple. You are not using your body to that which is the glory of God the Father, with that which is demanded in the words of the Lord of a God. So you're falling sick. 
You're preparing your body for a greater sacrifice to dig on. But your body is inaccessibly high. Sickness cannot touch. Far less you run your oil business. Far less you run your miracle business. Far less you run your healing business. He sends his word to heal. And his word, he says, if you would obey and walk in my counsel, I would have done you the best. I would have fed you with the best wheat. I would have given you the finest rock of a honey. And his word is more sweeter than the rock of a honey. And his word is more greater than the wheat of the finest one, what you can ever taste. What could be greater, great, great sweeter or great tastier than the word of Lord God on this earth? Is there anything else? Foolishly, the people think there could be greater things, greater sweet things on this earth apart from the word of the Lord. No, dear brother. Only the word of Lord God is greater. There could be no greater relationship, no greater sweeter relationship. Nothing that could be on this earth could be far greater than the word of Lord God. In whatever arena a man can ever export or exported or he will try to even explore in the future. Only the word of Lord God is the sweetest. So here when Absalom was being rejected in his lonely habits to be saved, he has been taken care by the bows of this field, the thick bows of the tray. And what is that tray? The tree represents the pen. Every tree could be used as a pen. And every believer like a scribe. John 20, 31 to fulfill. Or 21, 31, whatever the word says. So we find if the tree or the pen is not been properly used to become a scribe, you will be surrounded by such thick bows of the tray. That means it is asking you to become a grammateus, but you are not ready to look into that. You are not ready to consider that. So the thick bows are taken hold, and then we find over here, of great oak tray, and that great, what we call gadol, it meant to say, the demands which have to be established are not disciple-oriented. And that great oak, the word oak, what we call over here, meant to say L-R-E-L-A-H. It is a oak where we find David killing Goliath. And for us, the oak over here is nothing but having given you in this life, this health or this body. is to be a disciple oriented, but you haven't used it for that. That's the word oak. You haven't used this body for the glory of God. You haven't used this body for the work of the Lord. And his head caught. And what is that word head? It is called to be Rosh. And what is this head, dear brethren? His thinking is not in the thought process of the word of the Lord. If you are not becoming a scribe, the thick bows of the oak tree, as we look over here, referring back to a pencil or a pen or a tree, or referring back to the pen of the word of the Lord. If your hands are not being used with that pen to write the word of the Lord of a God, they will catch hold of your head. Because your head is not being renovated. Satan wants your head. Satan doesn't want you to feed the word of Lord God. Satan wants to drag away from the simplicity which is found in Christ by renovating the standards of your thinking. Christianity is thinking. Christianity is renovating the standards of your thinking as per the mind of Christ. So Satan wants your head. No thinking, no renovating in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God. And absolutely, you have been caught hold of the thick bows. And you know why every believer has been stuck up either there in the lion battle or the bear battle or the snake battle? Because you are not renovating your head according to the demands of the word of the Lord. That's very simple, dear brethren. 
Satan wants your head not to be renovated. Satan wants your head not to be filled with the word of the Lord. Satan doesn't want you to believe the promises and the demands of the word of the Lord of our God. Satan doesn't want you to make you know that the things which have been given by the Lord God are our precious life. As he said in Deuteronomy 32, 47, these are our life. So Satan wants to make these words to be worthless, to be miscarriage in your mind. So what does it do? Never join as disciples. Never grow up into grammatias. Never renovate the standards of your thinking as per the demands of the word of the Lord. That's what Satan wants in you. So what does the word say? Absalom, though he thinks, God is at peace. Because my father is at peace. In his lonely habits, he wants to ride upon the mule, looking in the servants of David. And the servants of David are the beloved ones. They were a man of mighty valor. And though David asks to deal gently for the sake of his son, they might have dealt gently, but what the righteousness of the word of Lord God demands, justice has to execute. So he finds this Absalom is not worthy as to be as a grammatist growing up or to have the commands of the word of Lord God and not to disobey the law. By judging another people, he said, you are, dis you are deciding the law in James 4. So you cannot hate, you cannot judge the law. So in that he mentions, if he would have known the law, he would have shown proper respect to the parents. If he would have known the law, he would have been heeding to the right word. In fact, indeed, if he would have known the law, he wouldn't have been rebelled. Though David showed grace to come back for him in his own home. And now this man goes back to have his own people having 70 men to run before him. So all these things he does and solving the cases of the people, he loves to win the hearts of the men in a wrong way, the way how Satan does the same rebellion. And then we find he comes to the throne, heeding the instructions of Ahitophel, and from the tribe of that Zadok, or not from the tribe, but the family name of Zadok, the other person gives a counsel. He has a mighty man with him. And he makes them to pass that river by that night. And the next day the incidents come into place. Because of the prayer of David, turn the counsel into foolish things. And now this Absalom is looking upon the servants of David and is trying to run. And what is caught is head. Lord God, the Holy Spirit is so crystal clear to instruct the foolish man on this earth to learn from these ensamples not to disobey, not to be ignorant, not to be arrogant, but rather respect the word of Lord God. The patterns. Man on this earth, if he is looking upon other person suffering with the sicknesses of a same kind, what he has the same symptoms, he would be very careful to learn from him. But man is not ready to learn the greater symptoms of his spiritual death or eternal death or second death by learning a lesson from this sort of absolute rebellion life. Because he wants to follow strange things. The tree has caught the neck. The thick bows, the mule went under the thick bows and Absalom was caught. His head was caught. It was been put in such kind of a pressure that he cannot think now. He cannot think because his body is not being trained to be like a scribe. And if your head is not been trained to become like a scribe, you know, the world doesn't have the solution what we have now through the standards of ancient pictographical representation of the word of the Lord. Everything has been found for us over here. Crystal clear explanation for us to look the viewpoint of God over the viewpoint of men, what they've cooked up in the theories of evolutions, what they've cooked up the mannerisms of life or the paths of life. All this is strange to the mind of God. Your body is not designed for sickness. 
Your body is designed to be a disciple oriented, growing up into grammar tears. Your body has been designed to transform as a living sacrifice to Christ. Your body has been given a protection, sagab, inaccessibly high. Satan cannot touch you. And Satan, what does it want? It wants only one thing. It, it cannot roar. It cannot go to destroy, though it may be called to be as a roaring lion upon you. You know what Satan wants you? Just disobey the word of the Lord. That's the power of the motto of Satan in your life. Never know the word of God. Disobey the word of God, even though what you have. That's what Christ, our Lord of God, comes in this ministry of life to say, if you would believe, if you would only believe have faith why is mentioning that because the word of lord god is such a powerful weapon and satan knows very well if you know the truth the truth will set you free you will be free in the realm to teach jehovah malak lord god reigneth and you don't have any fear of anything on this life so Satan doesn't want to give you the word. So it wants to make you up to come weekly once to the church, monthly once to the partaking of your elements in the Lord and making you to become ruined, destroyed, ruined, destroyed. It is celebrating with your body, great feast. Every time you come to look. And what we have over here for us, Sageb kind of ministry, what Lord God teaches inaccessibly high the same thing we read in Psalms 94 or 93 those who keep their heart upon the Lord God Lord God reveals about him to him and he keeps him inaccessibly high no one can touch far less you worry about the sicknesses of this life financial services of this life what you eat, what you drink. If the revenuous nature crow can give the food, do not think if you are faithful servants to the word of the Lord of God, Lord God the Father can give you food. Doesn't he give water for Hagar when she wanted the water in the case of Ishmael? Doesn't he give you the needed food for you? The problem with it is you don't believe the word of God. And where you are cutting up? the thick balls what was caught over there the head and satan wants nothing but your head the thick balls are the details of life to master the details of life it demands that you walk as a scribe if you're not grown up like a scribe you're not representing the kingdom of god and already satan being the prince of the power of this air it wants greater power to be ruled over it and to represent that greater power the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit demands you become a scribe you become a wise man to overcome the details and the things pertaining to Satan and you overcome in such a way in such a life in such a manner That you never worry that your head could be caught in the thick bows of this life. Because you're constantly alive to become grammatiers. You're constantly alive to make that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. You're constantly dealing from to be that which is the word of the Lord of a God. You're constantly aware that Yehovah Elohim is the only Malach who reigneth. And he reigneth provided our blood is truth. And the blood is truth. It makes us to be the disciples. If the blood is truth, making those disciples into grammatias will be the one which circulates and pumps in us. That's very simple. And in fact, indeed, our blood is truth. Because he purchased us with his own blood. And we cannot have any other blood to pump in this. And die sin unto death worthlessly. So dear brethren, your head shall not be caught, meant to say you have to walk like a scribe. Because we have been told, any strange thing is not acceptable in the sight of the Lord. He said in Matthew 23, 34, he shall send his scribes. He shall send his wise man. 
He shall send his prophets. Every time you open up your mouth, it's a prophetic word. From the Bible to teach them, to edify them, like a greater work than the bones of Elisha, where they would come in contact with the word of the Lord of a God, being spiritually dead, they would come to know the peace of Christ, which wherewith they could not only be relying on this earth, but to live a life of a resurrection power on this earth, to manifest the life in eternity as well. And we are showing them the ensamples of the life of eternity to these people, who are the ensamples of the old sin nature, what this world has lived through the teachings of men. The Israelites should have been representing about my Christ. They failed. But we have now that ministry for us. We have been graced out in Christ. Though you are eunuch, you have been given privilege to serve Christ. We have such a ministry now. The unveiled ministry of the word of the Lord. Not a veiled ministry of the Old Testament, but the unveiled ministry of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we are manifesting as an ensamples of the heavenly citizens to this people, learning to prove in contrary to the ensamples of such lives of the Old Testament like this Absalom or the people who rebelled in the book of Revolution 2 and 3, who went to be Nicolaitans doctrine, who went to be proselytes, who went to be as Demas, one of the example as Paul writes very clearly to Timothy, Lord God will pay him back in the day of judgment. For all, for all these people who walked contrary, now we have been given as an ensample in the completed can of scripture in the word of the Lord of our God to prove to these people that we are manifesting the heavenly citizens of Christ far less you can die in the standards of the lustful patterns of your old sin nature. The way where you live, so you walk. If you live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to produce the character of Christ to be magnified in you. But if you don't live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you're going to manifest the old sin nature and you're going to die sin unto death. That's what the people they are today. They have to be manifesting the heavenly citizens and sample to this world. You are manifesting that you are also the rebellion like the Old Testament saints. You are also rebellion like the standards of the old sin nature, like this Absalom caught in the thick bows of the oak tree. So look, where is the problem beginning? What went wrong in the first marriage? Thinking went corrupted. What goes now wrong in your head? No discipleship program into grammatias. Everything gets destroyed. Thinking gets corrupted. And when the thinking gets corrupted, your distorted thinking will take away your life. It's as simple as the dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. Thinking gets corrupted. So here we have for us, his head was caught old, the word Kazakh. If you don't daily come to learn the word of Lord God, the Kazakh process proves that daily he rejected the word of Lord God. Kazakh meant to say day by day, learning, day by day, making up to build a wall of fortification by digging in and taking the word of Lord God from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun because the word of Lord God all day long it has been preached you know, when you fail to take up the word of Lord God all day long, what happens? We have some of the beautiful verses for us to look upon this word all day long. Beginning with the book of Psalms, if you would look, he teaches to us, when you fail to gather the word of Lord God, Psalms 32, 3, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. What was the silence? Not to confess your sins and get back to the word of the Lord of a God. If you confess and you get back, it has to be the process as Psalms 35, 28 teaches, and my tongue shall speak of the righteousness and thy praise all the day long. You know what a great privilege it has been given for us to have all the day long the things pertaining to the glory of the Lord of a God. And if you don't do so, he says, all day long you go on mourning and all day long you will be troubled. In Psalms 38.6 So dear brethren, 
they that seek their life and they that are happy to talk about mischievous things and imagine decides all day long they work that's how king of terrors you will meet so he says in god we boast all the day long and praise his name forever and in Psalms 44, 20, For thy sake, O Lord, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And my tongue also shall speak of the righteousness all day long. For they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame, that seek my damage, or my hurt, or my standards of which they love to be looking criminality. Dear brethren, if you have not been looking out the word of Lord God, he says in Psalm 73, 14, All the day I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If you are not looking all day long to gather in the word of Lord God, therefore in the present media, you find every day the word of Lord God has been taught. Every day at least the word of Lord God to be read. Every day the word of Lord God has to be emphasized. All day long. But the people are adding their own alien standards of teachings in the pulpit. So dear brethren, he says over here, saying that he was caught hold, Kazakh. If you don't make up your time to dig and take from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, the details of the word of the Lord of a God, it is as good as they have been fallen upon worthless things, Nepal. The great glory of Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, which should be the manifesto of our lives. In the midst of these unbelieving men, it has fallen into the ears of worthless people, miscarriage-oriented men. So the head was caught hold of the oak. That means you have been given Aleph energy, vigor and valor to become a disciple, but you haven't used it. And he was taken up. You know how he was taken up? The authority given by the Lord between the heaven and the earth. The heaven, his thinking doesn't match to the word of the Lord of a God. The earth, he cannot sustain the pressures of life because on this earth, the liars only can live. As true believers in Christ being born again in the Lord, though we may live on this earth, we are not having the power of all sin nature to reign in us because we are transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the light. We are put to death the old sin nature. It is no longer we who live, but Christ who liveth in us. Therefore, we are transformed. Though we are the heavenly citizens on this earth, we manifest the ensamples of heavenly things to this world. But this man Absalom was been caught between the heaven and the earth. The heaven, because his thinking is not renovated in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God, he cannot be taken back to heaven. The earth doesn't want him because he has been a rebellion to the core. If the heaven doesn't want and the earth doesn't want to keep, then where he will be? He will be in the hell. The hell opens its mouth wide opening. The same thing with you. If you have been not renovated in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God as per the heavenly teaching... The heaven cannot take you. The earth cannot keep you. Because you will die anyhow, sin unto death. As you have read, all day long sicknesses, all day long troubles, all day long mourning, all day long you have the same weeping and wailing and gnashing and waxing of bones. Just look all day long, what is your life? When you open up your mouth, you will find talking about sicknesses, worrying about financial matters. Have you ever spoken about the burden of the Lord? Have you ever spoken about the mind of Christ? Have you ever looked upon the way how the word of Lord God is not being properly honored? That you haven't spoken about. Look, when you open up your mouth all day long what you talk. So the heaven cannot receive you. The earth also doesn't want to keep you further. So what does it do? Slowly, like a process of killing you in slow poisoning, it kills off you. It kills off in such a manner that... Like the word what we look over there for us, which emphasizes your chemical equilibrium being destroyed. So what you do? You love to go and take your catalyst medicines. Slowly it rottens you out, preparing for day and sacrifice your body. And anyhow, after the earth, you're going to be in the hell. Don't worry. 
Some will be risen for condemnation. Some will be for life. He said John 5.29. So don't worry. For eternal shame and contempt. Some will be risen. Says even Daniel 12. And some for the great righteousness. Glory of the Lord. So don't worry. Like Absalom you will be caught up. In your head. Because your head is not a scribe. And since your head is not a scribe. You don't fear the teachings of the word of the Lord. You make the teachings of a strange God. To be in your mind. You are sagab. You are inaccessibly high in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this church age. Satan knows very well it cannot even touch you. When you ignore the word of the Lord of a God, Satan has an option to influence you by false doctrine. When you fail to diligently search the word in the virgin exegesis, isochogics and categories. Satan has a great influence to influence you with false teachings, vacuum to be spread in. To fill up with nothing but vacuum, wind. Winds but no rain because the clouds without water. So it fills you up for solutions for your sicknesses. But the Bible says you are sagab, you are inaccessibly high. Satan cannot inculcate you any sicknesses provided you carry your cross every day, joining as disciples, growing up into grammatias and believing the promises of the word of the Lord of a God. But you don't believe the promises of the word of the Lord of a God, isn't it? You don't become to be the Greater work than the bones of Elisha in this life. The promises of the mind of Christ you reject it. The thinking of the word of the Lord of a God you reject it. And where you will get caught hold? In the thick bones. When the pressures of life to be tested in your body, it is not oriented to scribe. And since your body is not oriented to scribe, you believe lies of this world. You fall for the pressures of this world and you die sinner to death. And God the Father wants to cross-check you like Job. He has given a testimony. There is none like Job. They can be second David. They can be second Abraham. But none like Job. He hated that which my Lord God hated. He represented my, Lord, my like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He did that which was only the pleasing will of God the Father. And today we have been given these examples to be far high greater than the examples of the Old Testament or the New Testament. But to represent the heavenly citizenship of Christ of the heavenly standards to this world. And if it is the kingdom of heaven for you, you have to be as disciples growing up into grammatias unto the Lord. So he says, between the heaven and the earth. <laughs> and you know what happens there? When this man was been caught hold of the thakbos, the mule, the lonely habits of this people. What happens? The lonely habits, they let go. And what is that lonely habits? The men who open up their mouth to get every perception of their thought, as per the demands and the viewpoints of these people. The same thing between Adam and Eve. They tied the fig leaves. But when Christ our Lord of God called unto them, Where are you, Adam? He says, I am naked. The lonely thoughts, the lonely actions, the lonely way of life. Wherewith you may think, if I'm in right in accord with my fellow man, that's enough to stand before God. But he says, no, that's where we get by faith alone, in Christ alone. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not by works, lest any man should boast. The deeds of your gold and silver which you are going to purchase will not come to mind. All your good deeds, we read long back in the book of Isaiah, they are not filthy rags but menstrual cloths. What do you will do with the menstrual cloths? You'll throw it out. The translator did not translate that as a menstrual cloth. He translated it as filthy rags. Filthy rags could be washed and reused again. But menstrual cloth, what you do? You throw it off. So your good deeds. So is your mule. So your lonely habits to be fit and fine with your people. 
but not trying to be fit and fine or having reconciled with God the Father through the only mediator, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the mule, what does it do? It runs away. Today as well, if you teach the strange things which are not in accord to be disciple oriented to the Lord, it is like the mule which runs away and makes you to get caught hold of your head in the thick balls. Because every disciple who has been instructed, every disciple who would grow up into grammatias is such as the kingdom of God. But today men are not happy to become disciples, far less they could become grammatias or scribes and look into their life how much of their head has been caught hold in the thick balls. Every day God the Father is going to give you the word of God. Every day, all day long is going to give you the word of God. But you don't want to have that persistence. You want to rob the time from the Lord God. And you believe it or not, dear brethren, there is no need to say, but the point is, Jehovah Elohim alone reigneth forever and forever. There is no fear for us. We have to believe. And what a wretched generation it would be if they don't believe the things pertaining to their life in Christ. There couldn't be any other wretched, notorious, rebellion generation as the way when they asked, when the pilot knows it was for the envy, the chief leaders motivated the people to ask Barabbas. He asks the second time, is it Christ Jesus shall I live? But they say, no, crucify him. Such a notorious, rebellion, sinful, adulterous generations in the powerless, crooked nations we are surviving. And yet you don't claim the promises of God to be sick for your life, joined as disciple growing up into grammatias. They were oriented to such kind of a life. So in Mark chapter 16, verses 16 through 20, though they were snakes which bit them, or though they were the poison snake, the poisonous of the snake they drank, nothing has affected them because their life was sagab. Their life was a sign to save many unbelievers in Christ. But today now, you yourself are not saved properly. Far less your life could be used as a sign of sickness-free life on this earth. The bones of Elisha made a dead man to come to life. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, how much more our life should be sick-free. You don't believe them. It would be exactly like the sinful nation who rejected the word of the Lord, the glory of Christ, the crucified. Every time you're crucifying the glory of my Christ just for the sake of the details of your life. And yet, dear brother, the will and the glorious work of the Lord God, what he says over here for us, it has fell upon the worthless people of Israel. So shall be in the terms of this present Christendom if you're still not looking into the fire ministry of the word of the Lord of a God and let live God in you and put to death the old sin nature of you. It will be the same kind of generation, dear brother. So he says, there shall be no strange God. Anything that which is alien, anything that which is contrary to your body in Christ to be served, giving up your body as a living sacrifice to God the Father, and that is contrary now for you, then he says, that shall not be before God. Your body has been designed to be a living sacrifice to Lord God, not a sacrifice of a great slaughter to Dagon. How it would become a sacrifice of a great slaughter to Dagon? When you disobey the word of Lord God. And that's the lesson we learn from the Ang Prophet. The lion did not tear the carcass, neither it did not tear the donkey. Donkey is the purpose of which you become disciple, carrying the burden of the Lord our God every day. As Christ our Lord our God triumphantly enters by sitting upon that donkey. But you have been into your mule, female donkey. Your lonely habits. 
rather than sitting upon a donkey and doing the will of God the Father, you just left the the work of Lord God the Father because you have been disobedient. And Satan wants just one thing in your life, to disobey the words of the Lord, not to believe the words of the Lord. And today we find men don't even crack the word of the Lord of a God and teach to you the truth in death. All the time teaching and talking about sheer words of morality, refining of your old sin nature. The greater you refine the old sin nature, the greater you are still ineligible to be in the book of life. You are not qualified. The Bible doesn't say mortify as the English teaches. It's wrong. The Greek is necrosate, put to death. If you are not dead to the world and alive to Christ, though you are here kept alive alive on this earth, till we have been dead to the world, we cannot be alive to Christ. So any strange thing, he says, he doesn't know that. And then he says, and not you shall bow down to such strange things. So what is that bowing down? You will not make up your thought process to be built upon on such strange teachings. And then he says the word nekar. Nekar meant to say that which is a vigor and valor where they are diverting you out of not becoming a grammatias. They are making your head not to think of grammatias. So without exegesis, dear brethren, you are serving strange gods. Therefore, exegete the passages. John 1.18 as a pastor teaches, given the authority for you. By exegeting and looking upon the great and unique word of the Lord of a God, you can teach and learn many things for these people. Because if God the Father has hidden and kept for us these things, discovering the things of those hidden things is a great joy to God. It is a great pleasure for the King to conceal the matter. And we as being a faithful expert servants of the word of the Lord of our God, when we come to expound the things, it's a great joy. And people would walk having a burdened heart. Their heart would be sick free. People would love to worry about the standards of having their heart going to found blockages. The heart cardiac muscle not working properly because of such, because of such. You know what? If your heart is good and healthy, if your heart is really healthy, you could tell when your heart has been burdened with the word of the Lord. There could be no sickness to your heart. Far less people may talk about the age factors. People may talk about the food, what you eat, and it is going to affect your heart. No, having the burden of the Masa Lord of the Lord of a God upon you, your hearts are absolutely fine and excellent condition. And that's what our hearts are. Though the heart may fail, he said in Psalm 73, that Lord God is the strength and the power of my heart who leads me to live on this earth because your heart has been burdened with the word of the Lord my God. And as long as you fail to have such a burdened heart, you will die in your own sicknesses. Obey the counsel of the word of the Lord my God. If the counsel of the word of the Lord my God calls you for exegium, I go on it. Preach the truth. Expound the word of Lord God. And don't end up by not believing the promises of God. Whenever you say no to the promises of God to believe, you are indirectly saying to God the Father that he is a liar, he is a blasphemer. God forbid. He can never be. When he has done the great many things for the men on the same flesh, before the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and after the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as well, like Stephen, when he looks into the heaven opened up and Christ sitting at the right hand of God the Father and praying, Father, forgive them. Having such kind of a great miraculous things for us to look. And in the Old Testament, he did great many things. Given such promises that none of the sicknesses shall be upon you, do you not think he can do it now for us? 
Then why do you quote Hebrews 13 saying that Jesus Christ our Lord of our God is the same yesterday, today and forever? The God which you are seeking free for the people who obeyed, would you think he will change now if you don't obey the word of God? If you still obey the word of Lord God, he will be the same. If you make up your body to be the living sacrifice for Christ, he will be the same. But you are not having that fear of the Lord God to work the will of Lord God in your life. So you are following strange gods, strange teachings, strange concepts, which are foreigner to the Lord. He said you shall not bow down to them. The Hebrew word for us, what we have over here, is called neither they shall worship. The word worship over here is bow down. And what is that proskune in the Greek? But here it meant to say in the Hebrew, you shall not follow the thought process, what they have built up in their mind. So what it would be in this Psalms chapter 81 in verse number 9 for the word worship which has been used. He says, that the thing pertaining to shakak, S-H-A-C-H-A-H, -A -A -H, to prostrate, you shall not have your thought process to be built upon such alien things. Bible has only one thing. Bible knows only one thing. Obey the word of the Lord of a God and you will prosper. We will live many days. Again, the same word for us in Job 36. In verse number 11, we have this passage which emphasizes if they obey and serve him, that is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, which is the word of Lord God, and they shall die without knowledge. This is a very simple conclusion for you. If you obey, and if you don't rebel like the young prophet who rebelled and died, Satan cannot do anything. It cannot even touch you. The only thing Satan all the time tries in you is to rebel the word of God, not to walk according to the standards of the word of the Lord, not to be the word of Lord God to these people. When you transform and become the word of Lord and you walk by the word of Lord, your rule should be, you know, the way how Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was a servant to God the Father. He was blind and deaf to the world. That should be your rule. You shall be blind and deaf to the world. You have to look only the teachings of Christ. What the word says, is there the word? So you don't find your translations. You have to go back in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. You have to exegete the passages. You have to go back and learn the word from the ancient Hebrew pictographical representation of the thoughts. There is nothing on this world which could be greater than what we find for us in the word of the Lord. Even your solution, your prosperity, your success or looking into your failures your uh, or your miseries. We can easily analyze and understand from the word of the Lord of our God what they are for us. They are very easy. But since you don't walk according to the will of God the Father, as we read Job 36, 11, if they obey and serve him, they will see many days of prosperity. Many years with great pleasures. If they don't, they will perish without even having the knowledge that they have perished. And today you have a chance again to rebound. You have a chance to come back and confess your sins in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the Lord. The time is too short for us to waste our life in the silly, stupid details of your research of health, of your research of stupidity, to use the word, or your vain imaginations, to use the word. Research where Christ our Lord of our God has told for us about the health in the Bible. Walk according to his mandates. Believe and you will be saved. And you will not die sin unto death. 
Your research in this world may be great for the details of life, which is also vain and vague. Without Christ, without the word of the Lord, without having mind of Christ in you, do you think you will have any success or pleasure? No, dear brother. It's like having no caliber, no capacity to enjoy the details of life. In order to enjoy the details of life, you should have caliber and capacity. It has been given only by the word of Lord of God. And the greater you are not burdened with the word of the Lord of God. The greater you have been burdened to get hold of yourself into the thick bows of the great oak tree. Upon your mule you want to run. The heaven doesn't want to take you. The earth doesn't want to keep you. Remember those words. Because the heaven reflects the thinking of Christ which you don't have. The earth knows very well. Your body has been rotten. You are perishing without knowledge. And what best Satan can do? It can only rot on your flesh. When your flesh has not been inculcated with proper salt. You know that even when you get your non veg you just put it up with salt and you preserve the flesh. The flesh is preserved only by the word of the Lord. That's the salt, the word of God. If the salt has lost its savor, who can again reback re it or to make it to be savor again? You cannot. The salt is gone. The savor is gone. It is neither used for the master or for the things pertaining to this, so we throw it off. Your life is such. Your flesh has been rotten. The earth doesn't want to keep you back. And the earth also will swallow it up. We read that in the book of Leviticus. It is awaiting for the command of the Lord to swallow you out if you don't obey the commands of the Lord. So the earth doesn't want to keep you. The heaven doesn't want to receive you. Then why do you want to make up your head to be caught hold of thick of the, bow, thick, thick of the bows of the great oak tree? Dear brethren, become a scribe. No matter whatever may be the pressures of life. Every day come to write the word of Lord God. Every day write the word in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. In the interlinear standards and learn the truth. So that you could really understand the importance of this life. The work given to this body on this earth. To represent and to honor my Lord's mind to the highest. But every day it falls on the deaf ears, we know that. Every day there are people who are not able to look and understand these great things of the word of the Lord of our God being kept in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 and has been concluded as Isaiah 9, 8 teaches to us it is worthless, it has become miscarriage upon these people. Every day we know that. Every day they are counting it to be useless. But for the luxuries and the pressures of life, they think they can find a better solution how to live long. They think they can find a better diet so that they could be sick and free. They love to have all of these things. Just go back and survey your history in your uh, uh, Google search or in your YouTube. You will understand what are your priorities there. No search of truth. Constantly being bombarded by lies. They have been fed by lies. They want to make lives as a shelter and the refuge and they die vanity of vanities even the death word they die will be meaningless half of the days even the wicked can't survive we read that in the book of Psalms half of the days and the death word they die is also meaningless the great glory with this flesh what God the Father has given they don't even worry on that if it is not being used to pay back to God the Father, the same flesh given by God for us, for His work, after you die, you will regret. This body is not your own. It has been purchased with a great price. Therefore, those who believe in Christ, He has made their body to be sagab, inaccessibly high from any mannerism of fear, sickness, including the death. No fear of that. 
inaccessibly high provided you are a disciple oriented to become grammatias in the Lord your body has been designed you are born as a technon believer in Christ you have been designed in such a way to the Lord But you never want to become a disciple, never want to grow up into grammatias, you want to follow strange gods, foreign gods. Anything without exegesis being taught in your pulpits is strange in the sight of the Lord. Whether it may be the best of the best of the shirats of oratory, what these people would love to communicate for you in their emotional pattern because they love to have Good Friday and people would love to talk many things on Good Friday. Without exegeomai, without having the right depth of the word of the Lord of a God, what they are preaching is absolutely alien and foreign to Christ. Because they never make it to become disciples. It's not a yearly one's orientation, weekly one's orientation to the church. Yearly one's for Good Friday. Yearly one's for your Christmas. Yearly one's for your New Year circumcision day of the Lord. It's every day, every day, every day, moving on from glory to glory. And as the word we read, all day long, it is the proclamation of the word of the Lord of our God. All day long, we have been slaughtered. We know that. Because we have been given this privilege to teach the truth, but these people, they don't believe. All day long, we have been slaughtered. So what? We wait for the glory of the Lord. We come back and do the same thing with the Lord. As King David was been anointed by Samuel, he said, Why you look upon him? I have rejected him. I have rejected King Saul. Come, get up and go on to anoint a new king for me. Every day it's the same process. All day long, though we have been slaughtered, we don't fear. Because every day it's the same work what we do. Having a new fresh of hope in our heart, at least today, there would be someone to learn the word of God. How to illustrate this for you, dear brethren, at one ejaculation of your sperm to make your wife to conceive by the will of God, if ever it is, minimum 3 million to 5 million of sperms will be ejaculated in that only one sperm will fertilize the egg. The remaining 3 or 2.99 or 4.99, if it is 5 million of sperms, they die. So not every word what we plant, not every word what we give to you can get up the root in you. Except few words. And the remaining words have been slaughtered by your mind. Remaining words have been deleted by your mind because you don't even love to look if the message is for two hours. If the people have been greater than 28 minutes, they allow to change the expression of their faces. So though we have been slaughtered that day as well, again we come to give you one more day. As the way of Samuel was being told, Arise, awake! Don't be weeping, I have rejected him. Go and select a new one for me. I have chosen a person in the house of Bethlehem from Jesse, from the tribe of Judah. That's how God the Father would give us once again a great motivation to come and preach tomorrow for us. We know the pain of our heart and Lord God the Father knows what is the pain of our heart more clearly than that we need to explain for you. No need to explain for you. God the Father who sees us secretly will reward us openly tomorrow in the heaven. But in the meantime, the work of the Lord of our God, the glory of the Lord of our God which has to be given through your lives by fulfilling the glory of Lord God to be on this earth completely has been gone. But again, God the Father gives us one more day to come back and preach His heart love to you. Because He loves everyone. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but He wants everyone to come to the thorough knowledge of His glory. He comes to deal with you in kindness. He wants to make you to look the truth. He wants to make you to get acquainted with His knowledge. And it is not the name and fame of the person who is preaching what we are, we are unprofitable slaves. If not we, God would have used a better donkey than me to preach. It is not we. It is only to the glory of God which he uses us.
No name, no fame. It is not the mediator who gets the credit. It's God the Father who gets the credit because freely he has given upon us, freely has bestowed upon us. And all the days of our life is not just a temporary sacrifice of our life, but the only slavery to God the Father to be the prison will of God, which is his delight to be our pleasure. And for that, if needed all day long, we come to preach, we come to be slaughtered, we come to be prepared. And if needed, we die preaching, we die preaching in Christ. Because it is His will. So we not worry. Everything is in the control of the hands of the Lord. He knows how to direct, when to direct, when to lead, how to lead, how to test. Provided we stick faithful. Like the way how if the ang prophet would have been still faithful, we would have been recorded his name to be greater impact for us in our lives. But we learn from him. So many men might have read from him that he disobeyed. So in the same way, what we learn, we learn the great faithfulness of the Lord of our God to be obeyed. No matter what. He wants us to be recorded faithful for him. Just stand faithful whether it may rain or shine. Just stand faithful to come and take the word of the Lord of our God. Just stand faithful as Proverbs 8, 34 to 36 teaches to us that the doorpost of the temple of the word of the Lord of our God, you stand to take in the word of the Lord of our God every day. Just abide faithful to the Lord. We are unprofitable slaves. That which is our duty to be done, we have to do it. Because it is hard for us to kick against the pricks. Every day we need to do it. As you are a believer in Christ, you have to carry your cross and grow up into grammatias. Every day you need to do it. And every day you should be fulfilling it. And if you don't do that, dear brethren, The earth doesn't want to keep you because already your body has been sickened up. The heaven doesn't want to receive you because your head is not renovated yet. The hell is ready to open its mouth and to drag you. Because you're using the glory of God for a greater blasphemy in this life by neglecting the work of the Lord in this earth. Dear brethren, if you don't believe the promises of the word of the Lord of our God given for us, you're making the name of my Lord God to be blasphemed in this earth. It's not a worth of a life that you live by blaspheming the name of my Christ in the midst of these unbelieving people. Because they are not of a great signs and wonders which these unbelievers could ever notice. What we have for us in the Bible and if you don't manifest that through your life, the glimpse of the heavenly life to this people, they will perish. And when they perish, you are accountable for them because God has given you much and he demands much to be made known to this people but you rejected that to manifest to this people. And that dear brother, and how many days more you want to live this life on this earth? A sickened life. Can't you turn to become a sickened free life by becoming a grammatias, joining as disciples, and fulfilling the great and unique commission of my Christ in this life? You can. Today is a day accepted time. Believe in Christ if you are not a believer. If you are a believer, confess your sins and get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because though you may sit and attend to learn the word of Lord God, and if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you can never understand the burden of the Lord God. And taking up your cross every day, joining as disciples and growing up in grammatias is the purpose of your life. And if you don't do that, let Lord alone help you at the judgment seat of Christ. So dear brethren, which way you want to go? God the Father always gives you this option. 
It's your volition. He cannot go to change your volition from negative to positive. It's your free will. It's your decision. If you want to go up in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God, greatly blessed you are. You have been free from the traps of Satan. And Satan knows very well not to worry about you. And Satan knows very well now it cannot do anything against you. All the trials and temptations you have gone through now. You have become like a flint of a rock head. You are going to survive only to do the will of God and Satan knows very well it cannot disturb you any longer now. Because already it has lost its battle and you are going to trample down Satan under your feet. And if you are still disobeying the word of the Lord of a God, you will perish even without your knowledge. And since it is a grace provision for God, from God the Father one more day to learn and to obey the word of the Lord of a God and to live a second free life, the decision is yet in your hand whether you become a disciple growing up into grammatias or you want to die sin unto death. Dear brethren, think over these issues. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. And which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, by which you shall then acquire the possession of the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thon laga. Herald the word in season, not of season, because the diamond from my witnesses where we have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall, because we are not here being kept alive to teach strange things, but we are here kept alive to teach that which is the only demand and the design of the word of the Lord of our God to the highest for his maximum glory on this earth, which is to exegete the passages and making you to be the disciples growing up into grammatias in order to fulfill the great commission of my Lord and nothing else than that, so that you could learn a second free life Sageb, inaccessibly high to Satan to inflict you with sicknesses. It's not possible. Provided you are a disciple join growing up into grammatias. If you would obey his counsel and walk in his paths, God the Father would feed you with the finest of wheat and the honey out of a rock. The honey out of a rock, the teachings of the mind of Christ, finest of the wheat, what we have in the 66 books for us to make our lives in Christ. Dear brethren, think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship with Thee through the Word. The great deep things of your word which are, which are reserved and kept for the sinful mankind long back, being now manifested for us in the Bible to understand the importance of exegesis, isagogic categories, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations in knowing the power of this body which have been given for us, to enlighten thy word and to manifest thy word in this body as the body has been preserved, as the flesh has been preserved with salt, so this body being preserved with the word of God, we shall find no corruption in it. If we would obey and serve you, we would find the pleasant of days and the prosperity of years. At all, Lord, these people, they haven't obeyed and they're dying sin unto death, even without having a knowledge that they're able to perish if they don't obey the word of the Lord. So, Father, we commit everything into thy mighty hands and we pray the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy 
Holy Ghost to enlighten and to challenge us and to make of your each and every word not to be miscarried but to be applied in our life and to prove that you are the only one who reigneth forever and forever far less we could prove in this world that you are not capable so father you are capable of making our bodies to be the power of heavenly citizens to be manifested without having any sicknesses in this life at all lord help us to prove these things being faithful just to obey your voice your words and the teachings of your thing which are being given, being given for us in the bible and make known to this world by walking that we are having a spirit of lord god who reigneth forever and forever in christ matchless pure Lord's gracious name we pray father the lord god the holy ghost and light and challenge us by this message in christ's name we ask sovereign lord amen <laughs>